ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to the icici prudential life insurance company limited h1 fy25 earnings conference call as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to mr anup bakchi thank you and over to you sir hi good evening and welcome to the results call of icic potential life insurance company for the half year ended september 30 2024 I have several of my senior colleagues with me on this call. Amit Palta, Chief Products and Distribution Officer; Ijen Salim, CFO; Ajit, uh, Chief Human Resources and Operations; Deepak Kinga, Chief Risk and Governance Officer; Manish Kumar, Chief Investment Officer; Shobhik Jha, Appointed Actuary; and Dheeraj Chuga, Chief Investor Relations Officer. Let me take you through the key developments during the quarter before moving on to discuss the company's performance. Ikra and Crisil, the domestic rating agencies, have reaffirmed the rating of our existing 12 billion subordinated debt program as Crisil stable and Crisil Crisil stable respectively. The board at its meeting held today has approved raising additional capital by issuance of non-convertible debentures of up to 14 billion in the nature of subordinated debt instruments in one or more transfers over the next 12 months on a prior placement basis. The additional capital raised will further augment the solvency position of the company. And aid the ongoing business. I'm also happy to share that our available to sell products have been redesigned in line with the new product regulations, keeping the interests of customers, shareholders, and distributors in mind. Impact on customer benefit has been minimized, except for where necessary to due to the yield curve changes. On the distributor front, we have been working on the various propositions, such as clawback of commission on non-persistent policies, progressive commission structures, and reduction of commission. Discussions with partners are still ongoing, and we believe that these will evolve. We have been leveraging our experience of level commission structure in GPP Flexi with benefit enhancer and trial-based commissions in platinum products in these conversations. The impact on the company is also mitigated through a combination of measures by offering longer tenure products, higher sum assured products, multiples, and increasing data attachment. We believe that such customer-centric changes will boost the industry's long-term growth. For us. The comparatively lower share of non-mint products in our business mix, existing experiences of GPP flexi benefit enhancer and platinum, gives us confidence that the impact on our profitability due to the change in surrender value norms will not be material. During the quarter, we also introduced a CC framework to deliver the sustainable yield growth. The presentation detailing the framework is available on the exchanges and the company's website. As a company, customer centricity has been at the core of everything that we do. We aim to deliver superior customer value for a core competency of comprehensive product suite, seamless onboarding and sourcing via diversified distribution network, and best-in-class servicing and clean settlement. Deep in technology and analytics are the three catalysts that help us utilize the true potential of our competency and improve the overall customer experience. We believe that the three key frameworks of customer centricity, competency, and catalyst will help us deliver sustainable VND growth. A balancing business growth, profitability, and risk management. We delivered RWRP growth of 39.33.9 percent year-on-year in Q2 FY 2025, and 39.2 percent year-on-year in H1 2025, outperforming both the private and overall industry over the last four quarters. With this, we have gained 1.1 percent prior sector market share on RWRP basis to under 10.3 percent in H1 2025. Our focus segments, annuity and retail protection, grew by 99.5 percent and 17.2 percent year-on-year respectively, while linked business grew by 54.5 percent year-on-year on H1 2025. In line with our proprietary channel, agency and direct together have delivered 45.7 percent AP growth year-on-year in H1 2025. The overall AP grew by 26.8 percent to 44.67 billion. A number of policies increased by 12 and a half percent year on year in H1 2025. 48% of policies were issued on the same day for the savings line of business in H1 2025. Notably, we are also the first insurer to pay out commissions on the same day for our distributors. 
We continue to deliver on our claim promise with leading claim settlement ratio of 99.3% in H1-2025, settled with an average turnaround time of 1.2 days for non-investigative individual claims. Our 13-month persistency stood at 89.8% and 49-month persistency stood at 69.9%, a testimony to our customers continues trusting us. VNB grew by 4.2% year-on-year to 10.58 billion in H1 2025, with an AP growth of at AP of 44.67 billion, the margin stood at 23.7%. Embedded value grew by 19.4% and stood at 460.18 billion in H1 2025. Our business growth and profitability have been delivered with risk and prudence and is exhibited in a strong and resilient balance sheet. We continue to be the highest rated Indian insurer as per the two leading ESG rating agencies. We successfully retained our double A ESG rating from MSCI, which also makes us one of the top rated life insurers in India. We have also been conferred with awards in the areas of digitalization, customer service, and claim management by various industry platforms. Our complete list of awards, one during Q2 FI 2025, is presented on slides 53 and 54. Thank you, and now I'll hand it over to Amit. To take you through the business update. <clears throat> Thank you, Arun. Good evening, everyone. Now, let me talk about the business performance for H1 FI25. Our total AP grew by 26.8% year on year to 44.67 billion, and retail AP grew by 32.7% year on year to 38.27 billion for H1. Contribution from linked savings products to overall AP increased from 42.4% last year H1 to 51.6% in H1 this year, on account of customer preference shifting towards unit products from non-link products, given market buoyancy. Non-link savings contribution to overall AP declined from 26.6% last year H1 to 18.1% current year H1. The overall protection AP stood at 7.76 billion and contributed 17.4% to overall AP in H1 FY25. Retail protection business grew by 17.2% in H1 and 30.7% in quarter two of FI25 on year-on-year -year basis. Credit life segment has done well as we continue to add partners and introduce propositions aligned to the various lines of businesses of our partners. Coming to the group term business, there has been a continued and significant trend of price reduction in this area, largely attributable to increased competition. As a long-time player in the industry, we possess a deep understanding of this market, and our underwriting strategy remains focused on selecting businesses which meet our defined risk-reward expectations. Annuity business contribution increased from 6.2% last year in H1 to 9.7% of overall AP in H1 current year. Protection and annuity are our focus segments, which together constitute 48.2% of the new business premium, and we expect it to continue going well. Agency business AP grew by 51.1% year on year and contributed 30.4% to overall AP and 35.5% to retail AP in H1 FI25. Direct business AP grew by 36.3% year on year and contributed 15.5% to overall AP and 18.1% to retail AP in H1. Together, agency and direct business contribute 45.9% to overall AP and 53.6% to retail AP in H1 FI25. We will continue to invest in our proprietary channels to drive business growth further. Bank insurance business AP grew by 30% year on year and contributed 29.1% to AP mix. Partnership distribution and group business contributed 10.6 and 14.3% respectively to overall AP. We continue to build capacity and have added more than 29,000 agents during H1, spread across geographies. We have tie-ups with 45 banks with access to approximately 22,000 bank branches and more than 1,200 non-bank partnerships. To summarize, our product, process, and distribution are completely aligned with one goal, that is to deliver value propositions to our customer. We continue to focus on improving customer experience through technological and digital integration in our day-to-day -day processes. We strongly believe our 3C framework, elements comprising of customer centricity, competency, and catalyst, will play a crucial role in delivering sustainable VMV growth by balancing business growth, profitability, and risk and prudence. I will now hand it over to Dhiren to talk you through the financials. 
Thank you, Amit. Good evening. Now let me take you through the financial metrics. The VNB for H1 FY2025 was rupees 10.58 billion. Given our AP of rupees 44.67 billion, the resultant VNB margin was 23.7. The relevant comparison of H1 current year margin should be with the FY24 margin as it captures the impact of all assumption changes done on March 31, 2024. The movement in margin is primarily due to two factors. One is the shift in the underlying product mix towards unit link on account of the continued market buoyancy and the decline in the non-participating business. While quarter on quarter, the overall product mix may vary based on the customer preference, the wide range of our distribution partners spread across geographies with access to varied customer segments will help us sustain a balanced product mix. Second, on the macroeconomic front, over the past few months, GSEC yields have declined. Given the product changes necessitated in quarter to FY 2025 due to the new regulations, we had limited ability to align rates in our non-linked and annuity portfolio in line with the market movement in GSEC yields. Starting October, we have started aligning product rates with prevailing GSEC yields. Coming to expenses, our cost to premium stood at 22.0% in H1 FY 2025. Cost to TWRP stood at 29.4% in uh, half year, which has come down from 32.6% in quarter one. Our cost to TWRP on the savings line of business stood at 17.9% in H1, which has come down from 19.2% in quarter one. Our objective is, to, objective is to bring efficiency in savings line of business while we continue to focus on growth in protection business. We have been investing in people, technology, and process improvements, and the increase in cost towards these elements should be seen from the point of view of investments that we have made in our capabilities rather than pure operating expenses that will deliver operating leverage in the future. On the other financial metrics, the company's profit after tax for half year stood at rupees 4.77 billion, an increase of 5.8% year on year. Our embedded value grew by 19.4% year on year and stood at rupees 460 billion at September 30, 2024. Assets under management stood at rupees 3.2 trillion, and our solvency ratio continued to be strong at 188.6% on September 30, 2024. Thank you. We are now happy to take any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Swarnap Mukherjee from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, good evening and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so three questions from my side. Uh, first, I wanted to understand a little bit, you know, how to read this, uh, you know, how the margin development has been in the first half. So uh, just wanted to compare the margin which you had in uh, first quarter and in first half. And if I look at the product mix, that is broadly similar across, uh, you know, these two time periods. So, uh, you know, uh, also if I look at your cost ratio, which you have disclosed, uh, you know, this has kind of remained broadly stable. In fact, I think UM ratio has increased, I mean, improved marginally as well. Uh, so I just wanted to understand that from 1Q to 1H, what is uh, what is the factor that is driving the margin uh, margins uh, downwards? So whether is it a factor of that at an individual product level, some moves have happened due to designs, etc. So if you can highlight on the scene. Uh, secondly, on the channel side, uh, wanted to understand a uh, uh, couple of things. One is on the partnership distribution channel. So that uh, is still uh, showing weak trends. So uh, is this, uh, you know, uh, what is the challenge there? And is credit life, does credit life get counted here or is this particularly the retail product and if that is the case then you know what could be the reason why this weakness that is there and also in the uh, regarding the channels I uh, wanted to understand uh, how uh, you know ICICI banks premium development is playing out is it still at a similar level uh, yes uh, so these are my questions sir. thank you Thanks, Varna. This is Diren. Uh, let me pick up the first question on uh, quarterly movement. 
part of the movement uh, is actually the underlying uh, mix itself. You would have seen that uh, unit link, while it has been steady, uh, there is movement across in uh, the non-link segment. Uh, participating has done better than non-participating. And uh, that has uh, had an impact on this in terms of the overall uh, margin flow. In addition to this, there are uh, elements around the yield curve that we had uh, explained earlier, where given the fact that we had the uh, uh, product changes that had to be done in this current quarter, uh, we had limited ability to change the rates. Of course, starting forward into uh, October, we started realigning these rates. So, change, as you see, is quite negligible, uh, Swarna. It's uh, marginal movement across the quarter. Uh, sure, sure. Good. On Just one question. one follow up, uh, Dilip. Can you can you split or give us some color on the par non par uh, split in the uh, non linked uh, portion? Yeah, roughly two thirds. Uh, non par. Give uh, take. Okay, sure. Over the course of the period, we've got a little more par than the non par as compared to the previous periods. Uh, on your second question on uh, partnership distribution, uh, this is uh, retail business. This is going to trade like business. And it's yeah, so partnership distribution, uh, first of all, this partnership distribution over a period of last uh, four to five years has been delivering a COGR growth of close to around 20% for us very consistently. And what we see as a trend is uh, temporary in nature. As you know, that systemically we saw a much larger proportion of business coming from limiting products. And typically, partnership distribution is where you see prioritization done on non link business. So they technically did not have the tailwind, uh, which was uh, which was available to the rest of the businesses because they prioritize non link savings business. That's one. Uh, two, uh, we are quite diversified in the kind of partnerships that we have, and hence, uh, you know, uh, few months or few quarters, you may have performance uh, volatility in one or two partners, but uh, that is fine with us. We are adding new partners. We have added uh, close to 20 odd partners uh, uh, within H1, uh, which is added to our overall width of distribution. And we believe that uh, after the surrender guideline changes settling down uh, and um, markets normalizing uh, with other businesses picking up, uh, part of the distribution will come back on track uh, overall. Coming to ICC Bank premium levels, uh, ICC Bank is now quite consistent at 100 crores, 100, 100, 110 crores uh, on a monthly basis. So they've been quite consistent. The growth may vary depending upon what the growth was in the previous year quarter, similar quarter. Uh, their focus has been on protection and annuity, and on protection side of the business, they are growing quite uh, significantly. Uh, but on the overall top, top line, uh, they are quite consistent at 100, 110 crores levels. So there's no change in our organization strategy when it comes to bank assurance with ICC. Okay, that's that's very helpful, Amit. So just one quick follow-up. So in, in, in the new scheme of things, uh, in this new surrender uh, value, uh, uh, you know, uh, of course this regulation has come through. Now, given that, you know, I, I guess if ICC bank is steady, then uh, the 27% growth in your bank uh, is largely driven by the non-ICC uh, partners. Uh, so just wanted to understand, you know, the contours of the conversations in terms of commission payouts. How do you see that panning, and can there be a possibility that our payout levels, uh, you know, uh, can can change due to you know how the com competition is, uh, you know, would also be having you know terms with those distributors. So if some color on that would be very helpful. Yeah, so we've been uh, conversing with our partners, and I guess, uh, first of all, I really acknowledge that most of our partners are quite uh, uh, understanding of the situation and, uh, and the philosophy behind this entire regulatory change. And uh, the unanimous understanding with the partners is to ensure that we try to protect and get the best for the customers. And we are working with our partners to work out various models, which could be around clawback of commissions, if paid in full or debit commissions uh, or even reduction in commission in certain products uh, there to protect customer interest that is that was that is the only option available all those options are being explored and i'm sure over a period of next uh, couple of weeks we should be able to take it to closure uh, but good news is that uh, most of the partners are quite receptive uh, to the idea of protecting customer interest and keeping proposition paramount so from that perspective we are quite comfortable <coughs> Okay, so that's very helpful. Uh, thank you so much. I'll come back in the queue.
Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, The next question is from the line of Prithvish Popal from Ilara Securities. So please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, so, firstly, just wanted to understand on the annuity side, uh, I think one of the competitors had highlighted that there are uh, some uh, concerns around the pricing. Uh, so, just, uh, you know, we reported a good set of numbers in annuity. So, uh, you know, what is the outlook for this segment given where the competition is? So, that is the first, uh, you know, part. Um, second part would be uh, related to the uh, group protection. So here, uh, you know, uh, there has been degrowth. So is this purely credit uh, life driven, or uh, uh, there is some element of group term also? And uh, it has the pricing environment for group term improved. Uh, and third question would be around, uh, you know, the ULIPS. Uh, at a product level, uh, has the margin profile of units, uh, you know, increased given the higher share of uh, uh, summer shorts that, uh, you know, uh, companies have been selling? So to that extent, uh, you know, would that have also had some impact in terms of negating the margin decline, uh, you know, with, uh, on account of uh, the unit mix increasing? So these are the three questions. Yeah, so I'll start with annuity. See, uh, it's uh, on a base uh, of last year, uh, we did not have benefit in answer as a proposition. If you remember, we last year, towards the last quarter, uh, we launched our benefit in answer as a proposition with the belief that customers uh, who had apprehensions about buying a life insurance product on an annuity platform, specifically in the segment whose age is more than 50 years, was not buying insurance because of the loss of uh, or because of the apprehension of losing principal in case he was to not buy uh, or not be able to pay premium uh, for second year. So that opened up a lot of customers coming in buying annuity business, annuity products uh, who were probably earlier not buying. So that segment opened in quarter four and that continued, that trend continued in quarter one as well as quarter two. In absolute, in fact, quarter two did even more than what we delivered in quarter one. Incidentally, on the base of last year, we did not have very good an answer as a proposition, which is very different. So, in comparison, you will say that uh, you know the, um, the growth is good, because, but that growth was largely impacted with the new product introduction that we did in January, March. Uh, on rates, we were just comparable to the market, not that we were uh, any different, different in terms of pricing. So, it was less of pricing, more of the uniqueness of product, which actually got this growth delivered for us. That's on annuity. On group protection, you're right. Uh, uh, group protection, if you were to split it, credit life on a non-NFI side is doing fairly well for us. NFI, all of us know kind of challenges that we have on disbursement, so there is a bit of an impact in quarter two. The quarter one numbers were okay. Group term is where we have seen pricing pressure, like I mentioned in my opening script as well. Uh, on some short side, we have, we have started growing now on uh, group protection group term. However, on premium, because of pricing pressure, yeah, it has delivered a little bit of a degrowth for us. Uh, so that's how group protection combined between credit life and group term is showing a relatively limited growth. That's largely on account of NFI business, uh, credit life NFI business, as well as uh, group term business. Third question on a unit. You, you mentioned rightly that, you know, typically if a consumer preference is tilting towards unit, uh, one of the ways of maximizing margins is either selling a longer tenure product, two, attaching riders and increasing sum assured multiples, uh, three, to start with, sell a high sum assured product, and fourth is about, you know, uh, just ensuring uh, that you have uh, the same getting delivered in a composite manner. So all this leads to maximization of unit link products uh, profitability. This is a journey that we have been following for the last couple of quarters. And that is something that we want to believe that within the line of business, where the margins are relatively low, these three steps on longer tenor, five commercial multiples, and better rider attachments will help us maximize margins within the category. Prithvish, do you have any other questions? Yeah, no, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shreya Shivani from CLSA. Please go ahead. 
Hi, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, so first is on the, um, the net commission that I can see from the PNL for either for, uh, you look at 1H or you look at 2Q, the, there's, there's a very sharp jump. And we thought there was a sharp jump which already happened last year. So even on that, there is a, a, a very sharp jump over there. So we wanted to understand what product, uh, product segment, what channels, what is driving that. And second, on the VNB margins, now we closed first half at 23.7. And uh, assuming we continue the same run rate of 20 to 25% APV growth, uh, where do you see the second half margins landing up? Do we, should we expect 50 basis points or 70 basis points cut from the current one edge margins in the second edge? Or how should we look at the margins? Uh, or you can just give us an outline on how to look at the margins for the uh, full year of twenty five. Hi, Shreya. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the commission rate increase, if you recall, quarter one last year is when we started implementing the new set of commissions uh, across partners. Quarter one was uh, quite low to that extent, but uh, these commission structures started to get implemented over quarter two, and they got into full force in quarter three, which is why as you look at H1 to H1, you will see an increase. Uh, of commissions across uh, the two periods. So they're not directly comparable. I think if you look at it sequentially, you will start to see that uh, commission rates are broadly in line uh, uh, at a product level. Yeah, yeah correct. That's yeah. Okay, sure, understood. That's the reason why on a year on year it looks uh, quite elevated. Okay, okay, got it. Uh, but you also note that uh, we've been able to uh, look at non commission expenses and you're starting to see the decline there as well. Yes, correct. Uh, on your second question on uh, VNB margin, do we have a forecast? No, we don't have a forecast. Uh, we, we are not guided by VNB margin. We are looking at growth and absolute VNB. Uh, based on where the customer opportunity is, and you've seen this in this particular half year, and actually over the last uh, nine months as well, the market buoyancy has led to an increase in the unit link product. We're quite happy to partake in the opportunity, quite happy to uh, serve our products to our customers. Uh, in the form that they would like. There are no uh, artificial setters that we want to put in terms of a uh, uh, product mix by itself. Uh, and therefore, uh, we would let the uh, customer's uh, choice dictate where the final margin lands are, because that would be where the product mix ends up at. Yeah, but I was asking more from the point of view, when, what timeline do you think we will get a clarity about the margins from the new surrender value products? I know there is uh, only 20% of our mix right now, but even on that product segment, uh, are we any any time close to getting a uh, you know clarity about how the commission structures will be finalized, how the margins for those products will look like? So I would expect the commission structure conversation to continue through this quarter. We have already had initiated conversations and come to conclusions with some of these partners, but uh, we still have uh, uh, space in terms of closing the conversation. Uh, I expect that the market will settle over this particular quarter in terms of uh, the commission structures. As we said, the way that they've been approaching this problem is to ensure that it's a win-win situation for all three parties involved. Uh, we are quite mindful of the fact that uh, one cannot take away the customer's uh, return. Uh, and therefore, some of the changes that you've seen in the IRRs have been necessary only due to the yield curve changes. Uh, the, Conversations with distributors around the three lines that Amit also spoke of. Uh, deferment of commissions, progressive commission structures, clawback of commissions where required. Uh, and of course, where needed, uh, we have actually proposed a reduction in commission. My sense is it will take this quarter to settle down because uh, I believe the entire market is having this conversation. So let's see how that evolves, Shreya. Yes, yes. Very useful. Thank you so much. And all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Supratim Datta from Ambit. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is on the growth side. So we have now seen for quite a few quarters that growth on the agency side and direct channel has been fairly strong. Just wanted to understand from here, what gives you confidence that, you know, this growth, you can sustain this growth? Over, and I'm not talking about, you know, the next quarter or two, but, you know, if I'm looking at it from a two to three year horizon, what gives you confidence that this growth can sustain, particularly considering that 
in you know post the surrender charge regulations commissions could actually go down in some of you know particularly in the agency or in a non icici bank channel so that would be my first question the second was one was on the variable annual tps now uh, this has been one product which the regulator has allowed through the new product regulation just wanted to understand that you know is this a product that you're looking at launching and you know uh, how would you be hedging the risk in this product you know if, if you could give us some color on that and that would also be very helpful thank you yes yeah, so uh, coming to consistency that you spoke about on uh, on agency direct business as well as non agency business as you can see that uh, agency direct business we have been speaking on the investment in capacity that we have been doing for last a few to three years now very consistently uh, both in terms of people that we have deployed uh, capability that we have created the formal learning architecture that we have uh, that we have institutionalized now uh, both for our people as well as for the entire capability framework that we have created for our advisors uh, as well as our employees both in proprietary as well as agency it's something which has taken very long for us to put up a very strong and robust process it gives us a belief that what we created uh, over a period of 9 to 18 months uh, on the capability side will really stand in good stead for us in holding on to our, uh, uh, our our growth uh, specifically in these two and not just this uh, we are also looking at going very granular and not looking at the strategy which is only at a metrics level the strategy has been now created at a micro market level and as you know that india is very very diverse uh, every market is different and unique and the effort is to go and understand local unique markets which we call them as micro markets and create strategies which are unique and hence we believe that with heterogeneity of micro markets that you have in india uh, there will always be an opportunity area which will play out and deliver growth for us because not all markets are similar so i think the heterogeneity of the strategy at the micro market level uh, and the learning capability that we have created will hold us in good stead and apart from that even in our proprietary distribution channel which we call it as proprietary sales force direct sales force uh, we are seeing a good traction uh, in the alternate uh, sources of businesses that we are opening and few experiments that we are doing which gives us uh, good confidence that we will continue to grow on that front on uh, uh, non uh, on on other partnerships multi insurer partnerships of course the paramount will be that uh, eventually the revenue objectives of our partners with a corporate agency or brokers or banks uh, will actually be given by their own internal objectives of uh, continuously working and innovating ways and means of reaching out to untapped markets within the customer segments so to that extent we will be uh, not following one strategy to uh, to stay on path of growth uh, we will be governed by the strategy that will be chosen by our partners and i'm sure revenue growth for them is as important uh, to them as it is to us so we will be governed by different strategies by different partners uh, we don't want to have our strategy to decide what we want to do we would rather get our partners to decide what they want to do to maximize their revenues i'm sure with the sensitization on revenue uh, the growth will be protected by doing things differently and reaching out to untapped markets so then on your second question on variable annuity i think that's a great opportunity but frankly at this point we don't have a product we continue to explore what are the structures that we could uh, put in place to provide this uh, product to our customers and again uh, we'd also have to evaluate what are the hedging strategies one would have to take as you create these products uh, so at this point this is still a work in progress we don't have a product uh, ready at this point got it and i'm just to follow up uh, one amit could you clarify how many advisors have you really added over the last two to three years and how many do you plan to add going forward and uh, you know dhiren if you could give us some clarity on what would be the negative carry impact from the ncds that you plan to uh, you know uh, launch uh, in the second half that that would be very helpful Yeah, so uh, on adding advisors, uh, there is a focus on not just adding uh, licensed advisors to our base, which actually has grown by almost sixty percent in H one, but also to look at distinct profiles of advisors who can uh, give us access to specific customer profiles for whom 
we are designing our products. So it is actually, you know, when you create products, you have customers in mind, and then you search for the right profile of distribution to get your product available uh, to the right distribution set. So I think uh, not just we will grow on the number of advisors that we like, but we'll also endeavor to reach out to the right profile to give us the access to the customers most appropriate for our products. So that is one area which we are really invested, and uh, quite a few profiles have been, you know, successful in terms of acquisition and licensing. And we continue to work on that path and see how it progresses. So uh, over the last uh, two and a half years, I think we've added over a lack of agent. Uh, so the first number that comes to mind, you can check that and come back. Uh, on your question on uh, what kind of carry do we have on the subject, it's going to be very, very marginal. It's not something to worry about. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Madhukar Lada from Nuama Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening. Thank you for taking my question. Just uh, a couple of them from my side. First, uh, can you quantify the impact of uh, you know, not uh, readjusting the IRRs on the non-power power products uh, in uh, Q2. So that could give us some sense of what the more normalized margin in you know Q2 and first half would be. Second, uh, you know, as renewal premium continues to sort of lag and is just growing at about three percent plus. We are also seeing uh, continued outflows. Uh, so, uh, can you give us some sense of when this uh, this actually stops? Uh, yeah, those would be my two questions. Thanks. Yeah, I'm Adhikar. So, uh, yes, there was an impact uh, partially because of the yield curve in the second quarter. Uh, it is small, but uh, it did have a part to play as it moved across a quarter. But uh, as you look from Q1 to H1, you see that the margin movement actually is quite uh, negligible. Uh, that's one. The second point that you raised in terms of renewal premium uh, being uh, much subdued relative to the new business, that's right. Uh, there are two elements to this. One is that uh, we do have some of our policies which are of a longer tenure, typically 10 years and above, which are now uh, hitting the point of maturity. Uh, where, of course, these are uh, in some sort of planned out go. Uh, so those are coming into the fore at this point. Policies that we were sold back in 2013-14, uh, which are now exiting the book. Uh, in addition to this, uh, the unit link book, uh, some of the larger numbers that we've done in FI 18-90, is now hitting the five-year-plus mark, where you could say given the um, release of the lock-in, and the fact that markets are running at this uh, levels, customers, some customers, customers may choose to exit the policies either completely or partially. That's creating an outflow to that extent. Uh, what are we doing about this? Obviously, the longer the policy stays with us, the better for us from a company's perspective. Uh, one of the products that we had uh, launched uh, is the platinum product on the unit link side, uh, which has a sale commission format. Uh, the idea being that uh, there is skill in the game for both the distributor as well as the customer to continue, uh, as well as that gives us the benefit of a longer tenure and uh, potentially higher margin sale. Uh, so these are some of the structures that we're evaluating and we also put in place uh, in terms of uh, elongating the stay that we have with customers. But uh, of course, there could be points in time where uh, given where the markets are, some customers may choose to uh, book profits. Also, just to add, uh, as you know, that we were going through a recalibration in our distribution strategy and we were working that path of uh, diversification on channels. And we did have an impact on our growth over a period of last three to four years. Uh, so, year prior to 2022, uh, we did have a relatively muted growth area. So, that uh, muted growth phase had relatively lower renewal premium coming, uh, coming through now. That also is the third element, which is uh, impacting overall in the screen, apart from what you mentioned. And, and now as the growth has started to pick up over the past few years, we should start to see improvement in the renewal premium uh, over the next few years. Right. 
And uh, just as a uh, follow-up, I remember that uh, you know in Q4 last year because of these, um, you know, you had uh, you had um, gotten a negative sort of persistency variance uh, in your EV walk, uh, um, and and one of the reasons was obviously the ULIP, right, and and uh, increase in mass surrenders. Given that. Uh, this seems to have continued into this year. Uh, so, uh, do, do you expect uh, a higher sort of uh, impact? Uh, I, I mean, another negative impact coming through uh, in this year as well? Uh, has that been accounted for in your uh, EV calculation for first half? And what is your uh, uh, economic variance? Can you can you give me that number? What is the positive economic variance? Uh, in first half? Uh, one quick correction, uh, uh, Madhuka, it wasn't mass surrender. You are just seen elevated surrenders. Uh, elevated mass. surrender, yes. Yeah. yes. Sorry, yeah. It wasn't mass surrender. Uh, yes. So as you compare uh, H1 to H1, surrender rate temples have dropped. But of course, uh, the, the eligible book itself is much larger, and therefore you would have seen an absolute volume go out. Uh, this experience we continue to monitor uh, and eventually expect the unit persistency to come towards the long term average. In any case, we will reassess at the end of the year, and if you need to, we'll take an assumption change. But like I said, uh, H1 to H1, we are seeing uh, lower surrender rates. Uh, there is a marginal uh, variance that we see, but that's not uh, large at this point, and we will continue to watch uh, through to the end of the quarter, end of the year. So in fact, if we also uh, add to it uh, that uh, if you want to look at only persistency, whether 13, 25, 37, 49 months, actually it is quite best in class when it comes to unitary products. It is only the, uh, the design of the product which allows liquidity after five years and good markets has led to an impact on uh, renewable premium production. So persistency wise, it should not be construed that unit has a problem on persistency. It doesn't. It is best in class uh, for us when it comes to persistence. We don't have any problem on persistence. Right, right. And on the economic variance, can you quantify that? We have not broken that out this time. Uh, we do that at the end of the year, but there is substantial economic variance. Got it. All right. Uh, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhipi Joshi from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Yeah, um, thank you for taking my question and uh, good evening. Just a couple of questions. Uh, uh, if I look at the presentation and page number 67, uh, there have been some, um, you have uh, specified the reference rates uh, in September 2024. So, is it fair to assume that you have uh, taken some uh, cut in the economic assumptions and uh, that could likely impact the EV movement uh, in some way? And uh, second question is uh, related to the uh, uh, related to the yield movement that you have mentioned that it has had some uh, impact on the margin profiles. Uh, now, when we look at the non-linked product category, it has been somewhat weaker. So I just uh, I wanted to understand a bit more from you, as in which particular product category uh, has been affected by that movement in the uh, yield curve. Uh, is it fair to assume that? Uh, some impact uh, has been seen on the uh, NED level uh, margins as well. Uh, yeah, those are my questions. Thank you. Yeah, good evening, Abhiji. Uh, so, taking a second question first, yes, the impact of the yield curve has been felt on the non par as well as the annuity uh, product line. Uh, that's true. Now, uh, on your first question that you pointed out, uh, see, we are on the IV method, so whatever is the risk free. At that point in time, at the end of the period, that's what we will take into account. So yes, while you see the yield curve go, the second column is what we are now factored into the current uh, EV. Okay. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. And uh, are you able to, I mean, you have mentioned somewhat uh, substantial uh, 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 amount of economic variances, but any comments on the operational variance uh, that you are able to make for the first half EV movement? So we break the entire uh, EVOC for at the end of the year. That's what we normally do. So we will uh, take that into account then. Okay, sure, got it. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prayesh Jain from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. 
<clears throat> yeah, hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, so just on uh, the new commission structures and uh, discussions with the partners that is ongoing, uh, while you know the business is on, so uh, the current commissions are being paid in the uh, previous structure itself, and which would basically mean that uh, the margins in this quarter in Q3 could be uh, impacted to that extent in this quarter. Uh, that would be my first question. And the second would be, uh, what is the experience uh, in the new product uh, structures uh, in the in the October month so far with respect to uh, YY growth or any uh, product uh, mix changes uh, that, that you could highlight? Yeah, those would be my two questions. Uh, so, Bryce, here. Uh, the new commission structures have been in place for some distribution partners, uh, and we continue to have conversations with some other distribution partners. Uh, they'll anyway be effective for the entire quarter, so I don't expect a, a material negative from that perspective coming through at all. Uh, okay. Yeah. So in terms of October, uh, 2021 days of October, we are not seeing uh, any fundamental shift in our product line. Uh, it's broadly the same kind of trends that we had seen at uh, quarter two that continues into the early part of October. But again, October, November are festival months, uh, sometimes a little difficult to call. Uh, but let's see how that progresses. But nothing uh, dramatic for us to call up at this point. So no major. Uh, you know, sudden jerks in terms of declines or nothing of that sort, right? No, no, not out of uh, not out of line. Okay, thank you so much, all this. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dipanjan Ghosh from City. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good evening. Uh, just two questions from my side. You know, first, if I look to non-link uh, savings growth, uh, that has been quite weak. It was around 10% and 15% to Q and 1H. And, uh, you know, this seems to be that lower than some of your private peers. And also you mentioned that uh, in the second quarter, it was more skewed towards power over non-power. So the question over here is in case, let's say, uh, you look where to go through some sort of a slowdown in the second half, uh, how do you think some of the power and non-power products uh, will uh, see traction uh, from a going concern basis. And my second question is, if I look at your uh, cost to PWRP ratio for the savings business, uh, and again, you give the first half and one first quarter numbers, but my assumption would be that the second quarter YOY increase uh, in cost by TWRP for the savings business would be higher than the YOY increase in 1Q, uh, despite the fact that ULIX mix increase YOY was uh, relatively uh, lower in 2Q compared to 1Q. So uh, just want to get some sense of the uh, payouts uh, till the quarter and uh, also how do you see it incrementally? Yeah, so the first question pertaining to uh, non league business. Uh, as you know that, uh, uh, you know, on the listing product was typically the consumer preference during these buying product, buying markets. That is something which was quite visible. And uh, we anyway don't insist on uh, any specific product preference when it comes to distributor making a choice. So from that perspective, we actually saw customers relatively choosing lesser of non-participating guaranteed products in comparison to unit link as well as you know a participating product. But also uh, let me also highlight that you know participating and non-participating is something that all of us understand very well. But what is being currently sold in the market is uh, the customer's demand for easy liquidity in the product. You know, as you know that most of the products sold in life insurance industry are not liquid. And, uh, and the proposition that has really emerged over a period of last year and a half in the industry is about offering liquidity in the form of immediate income, uh, which was the option available both on participating as well as non-participating products. Different companies have taken different calls. Some companies have offered uh, this proposition on a participating platform. Some companies have offered it in a non-participating platform. Uh, so we incidentally offered this proposition of the participating platform. So participating platform has delivered a good uh, single digit growth for us. But of course, not in line with the uh, unit growth. And second, when you also look at growth, you know that typically surplus is, uh, surplus, investable surplus is generated with customers who are, you know, higher in age, 
and that segment we also have annuity placed in the guaranteed space. If we were to combine non-participating business along with our annuity, then some total growth is not very way off from the industry trend. So we need to look at normally selling in conjunction with annuity performance. So because eventually the customer segment is similar uh, with invested in surplus and has opted for annuity products uh, with us. So looking at all together, uh, it is not the way off from the market. Sanjan, on your second question on cost uh, ratio, if I understood it right, the overall cost ratios have increased, but when you look at the savings line of business, uh, the increase is quite uh, small. Uh, evidently, the higher cost ratios do come in from the protection line of business, which is also more margin accretive. So quite happy to have that on board, uh, despite the higher cost ratio. And uh, uh, what we want to do is do more of the protection business, of course, which does add to our VNP. So, uh, Jirin, uh, so, uh, you know, what is one way the opportunity that exists in the market? Yeah, so, completely agree. So, Jirin just wanted to understand that, you know, while it has increased marginally in the savings business, but also your ULIP uh, mix has gone up significantly, both 1Q and uh, 1H. Uh, and I would assume that, you know, some of this product, because ULIP is a lower margin, maybe your payouts also you would be relatively more conservative in that. So, despite that, the uh, ratios have increased. So, just wanted to get uh, some color on the market competitiveness. That's true, that's true. I think uh, the way the ratio gets computed is actually cost with the TWRC, which also takes into account renewal. So if you look at the cost ratio growth, cost growth versus top line growth, you see that uh, top line is ahead of cost. But because renewal numbers are, uh, are, are weak at this point, uh, 3 to 4-5%, that is what impacts the cost ratio adversely. Got it. And if I can just keep in a small question, I mean, your fourth quarter last year, ULIP growth was quite strong also the base was low. Now on this base and given the current market conditions, and again, I, I critically understand that you, you kind of uh, don't push up products it's about the customer demand. But, uh, uh, you know, do you feel confident of sustaining the 25% or 20 to 25% 20, 20 sort of a growth trend that we have been seeing in the second half? See, the proof of the uh, philosophy uh, that we have been staying true to for a very long period now is uh, my request to you to trace back our three quarters performance in last few years. And you will see that whenever consumer sentiment shifted towards products other than unit in product, in those quarters, our unit mix has actually dropped to close to around 40 odd percent. So whenever there has been a shift in consumer preference, our portfolio has actually reflected that. So just that you have to trace back in which quarter it happened. And one of the quarters which I can recollect is typically in that FY23. Uh, then there was a entire creativity print and there was a demand for specific kind of products. And also in between, we saw a lot of volatility in markets and that was typically in 2020-2021. Uh, that volatility led to uh, demand for participating in non participating products picking up and our product mix reflected exactly that. So we are quite confident that if you know, there is a slowdown, though I truly really believe that the long-term story on India equity is, not, uh, is still quite uh, strong. And we have mature set of customers who are investing uh, with full knowledge on unit kind of products. But even if there is an impact, uh, I guess uh, we have all the bouquet of products available with us, which can stand the test of any change in the market environment. Depending if you look at our new business mix, uh, about half of it comes in from unit link, 30% comes in from non link, and 20% comes from uh, protection. Now, this is no way reflective of the amount of time and effort that is spent from a product development perspective. We are quite aware that there are various segments of the business that have got differential product uh, propositions that need to be made available to them. And we spend adequate time with them because we are able to reach these customers through our uh, diversified distribution network. And each distribution network requires a different set of products to be able to cater to their customer pools. So the amount of time that we spend is no longer is not reflective of the outcomes in terms of uh, AP. Uh, we do spend adequate time making sure that our propositions on the par, non-par, and annuity side are in line with what the market offers. So yes. if there is a swing away from uh, unit link, we've got propositions in the non-link space uh, which cater to customers, and we should be able to take advantage of the opportunity there. Uh, got it. Uh, uh, thank you, and all the best. Thank you.
The next question is from the line of Gaurav Jain from ICICI Potential Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thanks for the opportunity. A couple of questions from my side. One is if you can share a little more the update on this ULIP uh, Platina as a product as to of the total ULIP sold, how much came from uh, this product. Second is uh, for H2, what are the new launches uh, that are lined up uh, and, and this segment of the business would be expected them to be launched in? Uh, Mr. Second question, Nagara, new launches, new, new, new products. So, uh, first on Platinum, see, first of all, uh, you know, like I mentioned, not every partner pick all products. So, uh, different partners prioritize products, and Platinum also has been prioritized by certain distributors of ours, uh, which is mostly agency and uh, some part of a direct distribution. And there is a proposition here because uh, with train conditions uh, being based in the product design, uh, customers tend to see much lower cost in the initial part and then eventually see a value getting attrition uh, through uh, commissions over a longer period of time. Uh, but if you ask me, uh, there is a fair uh, number of customers in the fair mix of unit link products where customers are still choosing our regular unit link products. Because we do believe that long-term investment, if one were to do in unit link products, they are quite beneficial if the customer wants to stay invested for 11 years or 11 years onwards. But from that perspective, not that everything is unique to platinum kind of products, but there are certain category of distributors, certain category of customers who have prioritized products who are, which are different in charge structure. Uh, but yes, it is definitely got newer customers to come and start buying life insurance for sure. On the second part of new product launches, this is one regular exercise that we keep doing. So that's a, as a process. Almost every quarter, we have either added new products or new features in our existing products. Uh, so that process will continue. And uh, we'll keep you informed as and when we have new launches uh, scheduled in the coming time. I'll just follow up on Platinum. Uh, eventually, if we see month on month or are we seeing higher activation in number of partners or volume of growth that we are seeing here? I mean, and it's starting to understand the uh, uh, product really tested in a big way and should be expected to become a meaningful chunk quarter down the line. It will remain stable, like I said, Gaurav. You know, see, I have uh, at, at a company level from a strategy perspective, we don't have a bias for any specific product. We are only creating options. Eventually, customers and distributors pick up what they find is more suitable. Like I mentioned, uh, long-term unitary product, if a customer were to stay in the estate for 11 years, 12 years, 15 years, is as good as platinum. You know, so, so some customers may be comfortable with a, a clear line of sight of making premium payments for 10 to 15 years, and they still find existing units as attractive. So we don't have a bias. We leave it for a we manufacture products, we pick up insight from the customer, we create it, put it on table, and then let the distributor pick it aside. Uh, so from that perspective, what product affords is what we make it as part of a distribution commission. So we pay what we can afford, rest the choice is entirely with the distributor. So it will remain sustainable, it will remain um, uh, uh, one of our significant propositions, and we see how it uh, evolves. <laughs> Uh, or it's just a question on uh, solvency. We rain, uh, if we raise this 1400 how much will the solvency increase to? And will we still have a room for uh, subject to be raised, or will this uh, be the final subject that can be raised given the equity that we have? So, uh, Gaurav, uh, if we raise the 14 billion, that should uh, increase solvency by roughly 20%. Uh, this is the cap that we have hit at this point. Uh, Based on how the numbers pan out, then maybe we could look at raising uh, subject additionally, but that of course depends upon what the underlying share premium, etc. is. At this point, this is the cap. So we've got 12 billion on board. Uh, 14 billion is what we can raise additionally. And that uh, contributes to 20% of uh, solid. Got it. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of mission Chawate from Kotak Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for uh, taking my question. Uh, you know, uh, what is the share of uh, 
you know the the uh, on in the banka business uh, you know what is the share of uh, you know single insurer partnerships you know i think i think last time we had mentioned that uh, you know icici bank and uh, uh, i think in one more foreign bank you are the single insurance uh, company So, twenty-five percent of our retail business uh, is uh, is uh, ICC and Sanitary put together. Twenty-five uh, percent of the retail business. Retail business, not not inclusive of uh, growth. So, of the retail business, it is twenty-five. Sure, got it. uh you know just uh, a little bit on vnb growth target uh, because i guess uh, you know that's that's the key focus now how are we looking at uh, you know this growth target for the year so we are looking to grow we've got a decent growth for half year 25% plus we we'll continue to uh, build upon that growth uh, through the year this year but of course one is to aware there are uh, regulatory changes that have happened in this current quarter uh And then, of course, the unit link has done quite well in this uh, market environment. But like I said, we will take whatever opportunity is available to us. Uh, whatever the customer wants to buy, we'll make that available. So, uh, so, so, so the the focus is essentially on. Uh, I mean, is it is it kind of uh, AP and a VNB target, or is it sort of more on a overall VNB growth uh, target? Uh, end of the day, it's all going to come to abs- absolute VNB growth. Okay, and and which you are saying kind of sustains at around twenty percent plus. We haven't put out a number, uh, Mister. We will do as much as we can. Uh, sure, got it. And you know, just uh, finally, uh, you know, couple of changes that we make on the on the distribution side, and I know it's it's early days and takes a couple of months to stabilize. But you know, generally, what is the success rate of you know some of these uh, change in structures on deferments or you know kind of uh, you know trail commission structures etc if you could give some qualitative color on this uh, you know in terms of how do you see the 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 uh, you know of take evolving over time and uh, you know is it open is it is it more with the larger distributors or smaller distributors if you could give some qualitative color on that would be useful yeah so see like i and mention as an answer to the earlier question that uh, our partners are quite understanding of the regulator's position on the change in guidelines and they are quite receptive to this uh, proposal of uh, these options that we spoke about which is uh, clawback or a different uh, across categories of products so it could be that different category of products may uh, have a different proposition on clawback or different So it does have an impact on cash flow. So probably smaller players uh, in corporate agency and focus, uh, you may see that the business model will have to be evolved into uh, growing the overall top line uh, to manage for uh, any impact due to uh, uh, persistency gaps. But we do believe that partners with better persistency will probably have least impact of these changes. uh so from that perspective you know different partners different fabrics and different combinations will evolve and we'll see how it uh, how it pans out but one thing is clear uh, that we have to work towards overall expanding the market uh, through different propositions and look at compensating for whatever impact is on revenue on account of lapsed policies uh, so that is something which will really emerge we would not know uh, how it will evolve Uh, but at this point in time, uh, uh, for the uh, for the changes that we have been discussing, uh, most of our partners are very receptive, uh, and this entire philosophy of you know good for customers and fair to uh, fair to shareholder as well as fair to distributor is something which is really understood well, and it has not been as complicated as it has been made out to be. Uh, I think partners have been extremely forthcoming in uh, accepting this proposal as a new way of distributing life insurance going forward, and we truly believe that eventually it will convert into a good outcome for the customer. And that includes banks and the larger partners as well. We yeah, have, of course, banks as well as anywhere where we have multi insurance partnerships. So, in fact, property distribution specific to agencies, we have already implemented changes. 
and uh, in banks anyways we have only 22% of our business coming from multi insurer uh, corporate agents and banks so due to that extent we will be impacted uh, rest i guess mostly it is in place sure got it thank you very much i just want to keep repeating that uh, eventually non bank business is only 20 to 25% of our business so from that perspective exposure to uh, the product categories where uh, conditions will undergo a change is much lower impact on us no but you would be looking at uh, changing the structures or kind of you know having having more uh, kind of trail based structures i guess across product lines right i mean that's that's i guess the new way to look at things that for that we did not wait for the under guidelines we actually have been going on i am not i am not, not connecting the two yeah yeah so that as a philosophy we do believe that definitely is the right way of doing it uh, and promote long term uh, contracts with customers so from that perspective we truly on the philosophy we have no disconnect <coughs> we have already experimented in the past and that gives us the confidence that we will be able to tie through this phase as well so as a philosophy as a strategy we have a lot of conviction in uh, in deferment as a process Uh, to manage uh, overall profitability overall outcome for the customer as well as for the shareholder uh, got it thank you thank you the next question is from the line of meeraj roshniwal from ubs securities please go ahead meeraj your line is unmuted please proceed with your question Sorry. Uh, yeah. So on uh, credit line, some of the peer reported and mentioned that uh, they are seeing some slow down in because of lower disbursements to NBFCs. That we are, you know, uh, has seen good growth in the quarter. So what different we are doing here? Just to get some sense uh, how the growth is uh, looking for us. Yeah, so credit line slow down, uh, like I mentioned in the opening speech as well, is largely on account of uh, business in the NFI segment uh, for a reason which is well known in public domain. Uh, on the uh, business uh, being uh, uh, done through non-NFI partners, there we have seen quite a robust growth. So we don't see any slowdown happening on that front. Uh, so that is how it is indicated. So overall business, if you were to look at Credit line uh, growth did uh, come down in quarter two, but largely on account of uh, slower disbursements in NFI as a segment. So otherwise, non-NFI looks okay. It is completely aligned to the credit growth. It, it moves in tandem. What we try to do to create an alpha over general credit growth in the industry is to work within that hardworking model of increasing attachments and opening new lines of businesses with every partner of ours. And also, in, to the extent of adding new partners, which we have done it, uh, we continue to do. We added another ten partners uh, uh, in, in uh, quarter two as well. So, to that extent, addition of new partners, opening new business lines uh, with our existing partners, we have had great relationships with them. So, that is something which is uh, going to help us in creating an alpha over the industry credit growth. Otherwise, industry credit growth. One percent, two percent plus minus is something that we are quite confident of. And rest alpha, like I mentioned. is going to be about existing customers and new customer addition new partner addition got it and in terms of uh, margin uh, at the margin we didn't mention that before exit should be uh, you are not able to hear you so uh, uh, is it better now yeah go ahead yes so q4 exit margin at the time of march we did mention that that should be the uh, overall margin for fi 25 as well and given the changes in surrender some impact out there in product mix change uh, what is the margin trajectory we should be you know uh, uh, working with in the h2 uh, going ahead given uh, how do you see the product mix evolving from here and the uh, competitive intensity landscape changing from here So, Neeraj, we haven't given a, a margin guidance. Uh, what we had seen was look at portfolio margins as you look at quarter one and quarter two, and uh, that has been the relevant point of comparison. Uh, yes, you are right that there are a set of changes that are coming through on the non-link space in terms of the surrender value regulation. But as we mentioned, these are there are ways in which we are uh, looking at uh, contracting the impact, 
and uh, these will evolve over the course of the next uh, uh, couple of months and into the rest of the year as well. So there is no margin guidance to that extent. We are seeking to grow absolute VNB and we will continue our endeavors on that, uh, bringing up every product line that makes sense for the customer and we'll offer whatever the customer wants. Sure, sure, thank you. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. So thank you everyone for joining the call. Have a great evening. Bye. Thank you. On behalf of ICICI Prudential Life Insurance Company Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.